Hello everyone, my name is Rafael James and I'm here to present Evaluating the extension of wall displays with AR for collaborative work. This work was done with Anastasia Bezayanos and Olivier Chapuis from University by Sake. Wall displays can accommodate multiple people, viewing the wall from close distance and from afar. With the size and high resolution, they are used to display a large amount of data. But when there is too many elements, even wall displays run out of space eventually. And the space is hard to add. Indeed, wall displays require a large space to be placed in because they require a mounting structure and a complex setup. This complexity makes it costly and time-consuming to change the shape or increase the size by adding fins. Previous work increased the size of desktop, smartphone, and cave with AR, so it seems natural that we use AR to increase the shared workspace available on wall displays and offload content when it becomes too much for the wall to handle. Offloading the content into AR changes greatly the space available to the user. But what else does it change for the users? What is the cost of such an addition? Previous work studies the user space, whether when working on the wall display or in AR or VR. As this password does not consider a physical screen and AR content combined, we cannot rely on previous insights, but we can get inspired by them. So we decided to use the sense-making tasks as these previous studies to evaluate space usage. During sense-making tasks, users need to be able to move documents around to create semantic groups and explore the data. So as the first step for this work, we needed to create a layout management system where AR changed the augments the wall size display to offload this extra content. For this, we created a system based on three components. I will show the physical elements in black and the AR elements in color in the small picture. First, we use boundaries. Boundaries delimit the environment of the users. They represent the space where items can be placed. And boundaries are not visible in AR, but shown here for explanation purposes. Second, we define surfaces. Surfaces represent the workspaces used by users. They take the shape of traditional desktop-like windows and are shared by all users. The shared faces are placed by the users on the boundaries. Some special surfaces exist in the system, like the actual wall, and personal spaces that we can observe around users that are entirely personal. Third, cards. Cards are items that can be placed by users on different surfaces. They represent text documents, images, visualizations, or other content providing information. We allow users to create surfaces and place them around the room. And we design different techniques to move items around. A user can move either cards or shared surfaces by a drag and drop using a clicker. To ease movement of multiple cards, we allow the selection of cards either one at a time or many at once. Once selected, cards can be moved in a group between all existing surfaces. A personal space exists to store cards, accessible near the user like a belt. The user only needs to look down to see the stored cards. The stored content can be placed after on surfaces again. To offset the cost of adding AR to the wall to flood content, we run a user study. Our experiment had two conditions. The first one is our system that we compare for reference to a wall-only system that use the same techniques for the movement of items. And we ran this experiment with 12 pairs of participants. We use two basic space-making tasks that require layout management. First, the classification task, where participants were asked to classify cards in between three colors without leaving any card aside. This task is inspired by other classification tasks used in previous works on wall display. Second, the storytelling task, where participants were asked to create a story using 10 cards of the choosing. We chose this task to promote two cooperation behaviors. First, a loose collaboration for the classification task, where the work can be done in a divide and conquer strategy. And second, a tight collaboration for the storytelling task, where both participants must agree on every step. All groups did the classification task and then the storytelling task for each set of condition. For this experiment, we use two distinct datasets, counterbalance across conditions. The wall is completely covered at the start of each task for each condition to simulate the crowded wall situation like you can see here. 
Both datasets are composed of colorful and abstract images to promote discussions within pairs of participants. Now that we have a system to test the user space, we want to answer four main questions. First, is the extension of a wall display environment useful? And when is it used? Second, does the addition of AR affect collaboration? Third, what is the cost of adding AR? And fourth, how is the AR space used? To answer those questions, we need to study and analyze the collaboration sessions of participants working together. As videos cannot show what happens in ER, we developed a replayer tool. By giving it the log of a session, this tool allows to rewatch what the participant did on the wall display and in the ER space. It can play a session at different speeds and from different points of view, including the point of view of each of the participants. After observing the participants' collaboration sessions, we saw some impact of AR in specific cases. We did not observe differences in collaboration strategies during the story task, where for both conditions, participants worked closely together. And we observed that the addition of AR impacted the strategies for loose collaboration tasks. Indeed, during this classification task, in the wall condition, groups displayed four different strategies from dividing the work among themselves to working tightly together on each color. For the AR condition, all pairs used AR surfaces to classify one color and divided the task among themselves. Also, AR shows no cost on performance. We see no significant difference in the time to complete the classification task. This means that even with extra actions to create surfaces and the large distance to move cards across them, this did not have an impact on the overall completion of the task. For the story task, there is no significant time difference either which is less important as by design, discussion between users takes more time than manipulation in this task. What is interesting when considering it adding AR to existing surfaces is that AR is preferred overall by participants. They enjoy it more than the whole condition and feel more successful with it. While for both conditions they were wearing headsets, users rank the wall less physically and mentally demanding than the AR. But we feel that these last two results may be related. It is possible that participants walked around more and focused more in the wall plus AR condition because they were more engaged, and this relates to the fact that they preferred the AR condition and felt more successful with it. Of course, this is only a hypothesis. And finally, we saw that AR modifies the user's face. We saw participants dividing the wall into zones for the classification task or for the wall condition. Like for example, here we have pictures of the result from the participant task. You can see on the top images that pairs divided the wall into three groups of cards or into three lines of cards. But in the AR condition, they used the AR surfaces as their primary interaction wall face. They created AR surfaces, usually positioned on each side of the wall, to organize one color on the wall display and two on the ritual surfaces. Some pairs also decided to place every category in the R space by creating one surface pair color and removing all cards from the wall. For the story task, for the wall condition, all participants took time making space on the wall to arrange a story in the created space as you can see it here on the left. And on the right, for the R condition, we see that participants remove the story cards from the wall to place them directly on the R surface on the right. Similarly to the classification task, participants in the AR condition use the AR surfaces as a primary interaction workspace, promoting them uh, to a first-class interaction workspace. Overall, this work showed that we can create an extension of the wall in AR that is used when the wall does not have any more space and improves user experience, but also that this AR extension has an impact on the collaboration strategies. More uniform strategies were used in the AR condition compared to the wall alone. But we also observe that AR did not show impact on performance while it's more demanding than using a wall display. And finally, users turn quickly towards the virtual space to layer the content. So much so in fact that during the story task, all but one group presented the story on AR surfaces instead of the wall display. Today's takeaway note is that when used with the wall, AR surfaces were promoted to primary interaction workspace by users. This was evaluating the extension of all displays with AR for collaborative work. Thank you for listening.